In this video, we're going to learn how to rationalize monomial roots in the denominator. When you are asked to rationalize denominators, you never leave a radical in the denominator. You may ask why, and the answer is pretty simple. It's very tacky, and it's kind of like wearing sweatpants with heels. It's very tacky, and mathematicians don't like you doing it. So we're going to learn how to keep radicals from staying in the denominator. To clear radicals, you multiply by extra needed factors in the denominator. And you do the same exact thing in the numerator. Whatever you multiply to the denominator, you also need to multiply in the numerator. It may be helpful to simplify first. Here's a hint. Always factor numbers if they're not prime. Let's try example one. Notice that we have 5 over the seventh root of b to the second. This is a problem because the exponent is substantially smaller than the index, so 7 will not go into 2. So we can't simplify the radical as it is right now. But if we build up what we need in the denominator so that there are seven b's inside the radical, then we can get rid of that radical in the denominator and it won't, it won't be irrational anymore. As you recall, when we multiply, our indexes have to match. So here's the index. It's a 7. And if we want to get rid of our index or our whole radical altogether, we need 5 more b's to build up this b to the second so that it matches the index. Again, as we said earlier, to clear radicals we have to multiply by the extra needed factors in the denominator and the numerator. So whatever we multiplied in the denominator, we must do the same in the numerator. So the seventh root of b to the fifth in the numerator as well. When we multiply, we multiply straight across with fractions. So we're going to get 5 times the seventh root of b to the fifth in the numerator all over the seventh root of b to the seventh in the denominator. Notice that we multiplied. 7th root of b to the 2nd times 7th root of b to the 5th, and so you get 7th root of b to the 7th, because when you multiply bases, you add exponents. Now that we did that, we can simplify the radical in the denominator by dividing the exponent by the index. 7 divided by 7 is 1 with 0 remainders, so 1b comes out in the denominator. Ta-da! We got rid of the radical. In the numerator, we can't simplify this further, so we just leave it as 5 times the 7th root of b to the 5th. In example 2, we have the third root of 7 over 9a squared b. Let's go ahead and break this into two separate radicals. We have the cubed root of 7 
over the cubed root of 9a squared b. 9 is the perfect square of 3, so I'm going to go ahead and just put 3 to the second there, a to the second b. And now I need to figure out what will give all these different factors in the denominator an exponent of 3. That way they will all be able to be simplified and come out of the radical. I know that when I multiply it has to be a cube root, and now I'm going to go ahead and figure out what would make 3 to the second 3 to the third. It would take 3 to the first, because when I multiply bases I add the exponents. Likewise with a to the second, if I want it to be a to the third so it will come out of the radical, I need another a. With b, I have just b to the first, so I'm going to need two more b's to bring it up to b to the third. Now that I know what I need in the denominator to rationalize the denominator, that same thing has to be multiplied to the numerator, so it's in effect multiplying by a funny looking one, because if you have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, it's like multiplying by one. Remember, once again, the goal here is to rationalize the denominator. When I do this, I get the cubed root of 7 times 3, which is 21, a, b to the second, all over the cubed root of a to the second times 3, which, sorry, 3 to the second times 3, which is 3 to the third, a to the second times a to the first, which is a to the third, and b to the first times b to the second, which is b to the third. And that will allow me to reduce this rational expression. Twenty-one is three times seven. Those are both prime numbers, so this numerator can't be reduced any further. So it's as simplified as it's going to get at twenty-one a b squared, all inside a cubed root. In the denominator, however, I'm going to go through and check to see if my exponents and my index when divided will allow me to pull out all my factors. And I believe they will because they all have an exponent of 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1 with a remainder of 0, so I can pull out 1, 3. With a, 3 divided by 3 is 1 with 0 remainder, so I can pull out an a. And lastly, b to the third where I have index dividing the 3 gives me 1 with a remainder of 0, so I can pull out 1b. Since there were 0 remainders, I have gotten rid of my radical and I've rationalized the denominator.